Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Troy and today we've got another episode of the Rally series on Forza Horizon 5. Yes, this is the second episode I've done since I have returned from university. I have now finished my studies and graduated so that I can make more and more videos for you. So hopefully you guys are all having an amazing week. Last week we took the Lancia 037 down the rally course. It did fairly well. Uh, second place for our rear wheel drive cars, which was uh, not a bad showing from the little car. But today we are switching it up. We're going to something American. Yes, this is the Chevrolet K10 customized pickup truck. Um, it's effectively a um, Chevrolet Blazer. It is a four-wheel drive pickup truck. So yes, it does have four-wheel drive. It is effectively a four-wheel drive version of the C10. So those of you who know American pickups and American cars, you may have heard of a Chevy C10. This is a K10, which is just the four-wheel drive version. So uh, it does have some knobbly tires and some good off-road customization. So let's go ahead and upgrade the thing. Um, I'm hoping we can get this thing into S1 class. I haven't actually checked, to be fully honest with you. Uh, now, the rules of the series, if you've not seen an episode of this before, all the vehicles must keep their stock engine unless they need the PI to reach S1 class. All the cars are upgraded to S1 class. All the vehicles must keep their stock drivetrain, so we already have four-wheel drive anyway, so I'm not going to be switching that out. And all the vehicles will be upgraded with the rally tyre compound, um, which I can't remember what it's called in Horizon 5. It used to be called the, Hori uh, the uh, rally tyre compound in Horizon 4, so most people just still call it that. So we'll leave the stock engine. As I said, we've got all-wheel drive. You can swap in rear-wheel drive if you want to make it into a C10. Now, usually I keep the natural aspiration, but we're going to go ahead and throw in a supercharger just because I think we're going to need a PI. Visual parts, they don't really affect the car too much in terms of handling, but they can make it look a bit cooler. We've got this big ram bar on the front, which I don't like. And then on the back, we can put this like overlanding kit or we can go for the like proper barja kind of look with the spare wheels. I don't really like either of those and they add um, weight to the vehicle which we don't need. So we're going to leave both of those off. As far as wheels go, or tyres I should say, um, you can see that I've already upgraded this thing as a street vehicle. Um, but we're going to make it into a rally car. So the off-road race tyre compound, we're not going to use. We're going to use the off-road tyre compound. Like I said, previously known as the rally tyre compound, if you played previous Horizon titles. Uh, now, unusually, because this is a new vehicle to the Horizon series, we can actually go ahead and upgrade the tyre size. So we can make the tyre sidewall thicker. Now... This is the first vehicle we've had that has this option. And I'm not sure if that's going to make it better or worse on a rally stage. But we're going to go ahead and make these as thick as possible. Because my theory is in real life that can help with the handling of the vehicle. I have uh, an old British car and it has very thick sidewalls and the ride in it is lovely. So... That's my theory behind it. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we'll see how it works. We'll go ahead and make the wheels as wide as possible as well. And we'll make the tires as wide as possible. So we've got all of the grip. So there we go. What actual tire size have we got? 305s front and rear. That's uh, quite impressive to be honest. There's some thick tires on this thing. 
We'll go ahead and upgrade the clutch and the transmission. we just go with race transmission, a carbon fibre prop shaft, and we want a rally differential. So we can go ahead and tune the differential and the gears and things like that. Brakes, we'll go ahead and slap it on some race brakes so we can get pulled up in the corners. We can go ahead and put off-road springs and dampers, which lifts the car quite a lot. I think in the tuning, I may have to lower it slightly because I think there might be a risk of it flipping over. Um, so I will do that in a minute. We will put some anti-roll bars on just to try and keep this thing on the ground. We go for a full weight reduction. So we start off with almost 4,000 uh, 4, pounds, so two tons near enough. And we can get it down to nearly 3,000 pounds. So we lose about 800 pounds uh, in weight, which is fantastic, actually. Uh, it's a big old clog iron American vehicle. Now, we'll go with full engine upgrades and see if this thing is going to reach S1 class. Otherwise, we may have to go for some kind of engine swap. Uh, it doesn't look like it, although maybe when we get to the supercharger, that might push it into S1 class. I don't think it's going to do it. No, not quite. So, we're just under S1 class. Um, how much horsepower have we actually got? 500 horsepower 629 foot pound uh seven liter engine uh but we are gonna have to swap in something else because the stock engine is not cutting the mustard so we can go ahead and put in a 6.2 liter v8 i believe that's out of the that's the hellcat engine um we can put in the racing 7.2 liter v8 which already bumps it up to s1 class with no engine upgrades or we've got the 7.4 liter twin turbo v8 um, that puts it into s2 class so we're not going to go with that i think we'll try the hellcat engine um see what we can actually get out of that once we fully upgrade the engine hopefully we can get into s1 class with that I upgrade the camshafts we're getting closer we just need to get it just into S1 class. Doesn't have to be right at the top. There we go. It is into S1 class. So that does um, that does. So there we go. Uh, with all the engine upgrades, we are into S1 class. 658 horsepower. 552 foot pound of torque we're weighing just under 3,000 pounds so about one and a half tons but it is a big old american pickup so that's actually quite impressive and we've got some big wheels and tires going on so i'm going to do a little bit of tuning on this thing i'll put a lick of paint on it so it looks a bit nicer and i'll meet you guys at the rally stage Okay, here we go for our first run in the K10 with the Hellcat engine in. It gets off the line actually very well because of the all-wheel drive. I've given it this lovely blue and white theming paint job. I wanted to keep it sort of period correct. We'll jump on the brakes early because I don't know how this thing's going to get pulled up. Actually not too bad. Uh, we could probably break a little bit later, but this is more of a shakedown run for our first attempt Just to see how the vehicle handles on the course Keep to the right hand side of that water splash because we know that the water is actually slightly shallower And that can give us a little bit more speed. It's actually handling this course very very nicely I've set up the differential to be more biased towards rear wheel drive. So it is 65% in favor of rear wheel drive. So it handles a little bit more like a rear wheel drive vehicle. But then we get the sort of safety net of the front wheel drive to keep the front end in check. Lovely over the bumps there. It does not even get affected. I think those big tires were a good option. A little bit of understeer coming through the hairpin there but it gets out of the hairpin very very nicely we don't get any air time on the jump but it is a heavy heavy vehicle coming up here we're struggling a little bit for power the uh 
Hellcat engine is uh, not got quite enough power to lift this thing up the hill. But cresting the hill quite nicely there. A little bit of oversteer on the exit. Had a little bit of a bump. Now coming up to this corner. This corner is very, very deceptive. Some cars can take it flat. I'd have a little bit of break and lift off through there, but nothing too bad. Hitting the rev limit on the exit though, which will have cost us a couple of tenths. Now coming up to the final couple of corners here. We're doing very nicely. We're on the two six second mark. Down the hill we get a big slide coming out of there. That's the bias to the rear wheel drive going on there. And we cross the line. Was it a 215? Yes, it was a 215.886 for our very, very first run. Which is actually enough to put this thing just behind the Audi Quattro in 10th position. Uh, just above the DeLorean, actually. So that was a very impressive showing for our first run. Hopefully we can improve on that in the next couple of attempts. Okay, here we go for round number two in the K10. It gets off the line lovely. I've just got to remember to shift up out of first because it does hit the rev limiter. I've uh, tuned it more for acceleration than top speed because it is unlikely we're going to hit the top speed of the vehicle anywhere on the course. That braking zone was absolutely perfect. That's what we want through there. A nice tight line through the hairpin as well. Keep to the right hand side of that water splash and also this one. That was lovely through there. We're just hitting the rev limit a little bit on the exit. That's probably just the water slowing us down. Probably a little bit too much braking there, but that can be improved on the next run. Now this corner here, do we get a bit of oversteer? Yes, we do, but most cars do through there. And it was lovely and controlled. Now carrying on up the hill, this is where it gets a little bit bumpy. Some of the lower slung cars struggle through here. But the K10 soaks it up absolutely lovely. We're a little bit wide on the uh, exit of that corner again though. A little bit late on the brakes into the hairpin. And again we get a bunch of understeer which really throws you off actually. Now coming down the straight here, we don't get any air time once again. Coming into the couple of right handers here. That was lovely through there. Uh, coming up the hill, we're already at 110. What are we going to crest the hill at 117? That was absolutely lovely through there. Probably a little bit too high geared coming into that corner though. We could probably get away with fourth there. The fourth and fifth gears are a little bit too close together. That could have been improved in the tuning there. But you never know what you're going to get until you run the car down the course this feels like a much much better run although that was a little bit too high geared through there could have got away with fourth fourth seems to spin up the tires a lot more so you have to put it into fifth but then fifth is a little bit too high geared coming down the hill it's definitely an improvement on our first run a 213 that was enough to push it up another position above the audi quattro this time Moving it up to a ninth position. Uh, I definitely think we got a little bit more speed out of it uh, down some of the straights. And we got out the corners a lot better. It's still quite a lot of understeer coming into the hairpin. So I'm going to try and brake earlier and try and coast around the hairpin this time. Uh, see if we can get out of there a little bit better. We'll pick up a couple of tenths all around the course and that will soon add up to a second and that can be enough to push it up another position. The F450 currently is in 8th place. That's a 211. But I'm not sure if we're going to beat that. Let's see what we can do. Okay, attempt number 3. This is the big one. Shift up early. That was absolutely perfect. We didn't bog off the line this time or hit the rev limiter. It's actually very, very controlled on the tarmac section. And then we're straight onto the dirt. Now the weight of this vehicle uh, can be an advantage through the water sections. It moves the water out of the way a lot easier. Some of the little cars like the AMC Gremlin struggle in the water sections because they don't have enough momentum to battle against it. 
but uh, the K10 gets through the water splashes very very nice all wheel drive will help that as well now this corner here we do have to brake a little bit early otherwise we end up out wide which we did anyway that's probably a little bit too late on the brakes I'm trying to be a little bit braver on this run see if we can pick up a couple of tents there now coming on to the straight up the hill here like I said this is the bumpy section K10 seems to handle this very very well it's probably one of the most stable cars I have driven up here now we said we're gonna coast through here nicely we'll just keep it nice and slow we still got a bit of understeer even when we were coasting around there I was probably a little bit too slow around the hairpin could have got a bit more speed couple of right handers here we're out a little bit on the grass but that can sometimes be a faster line let's see what kind of speed we can get up the hill I'm gonna keep it absolutely on the red line 116 we were a little bit slower on that run we're also in sixth up there it's the first time we've got the car into sixth we probably have got away with fourth or fifth through there knock it down to fourth coming out of the right hander there and we're on to the final couple of corners this run does feel slightly slower than our second one i have to say i think the second run is going to be the one well let's see what we can do down the straight we're out wide a little bit there struggling for grip it doesn't look like we're going to beat our previous run in fact no it was slower so our second run is going to be the one Third run there, a 2015.068. That was slower than our uh, second run, but still faster than the first one. There was a few areas there where I probably had the wrong gear. Could have got away with fourth or fifth. But yes, a very impressive showing from the K10. Let's see how it racks up on our leaderboard. Well, there we have it. It is a ninth position for the Chevrolet K10. And what a run it was. The second run actually ended up being our fastest there. And it was actually a very, very nice car to drive down rally stage. The all-wheel drive helped it get out the corners very, very nicely. And with those big tyres you can see there, it gripped up really nicely. It soaked the bumps up superbly. I did actually lower the vehicle a little bit in tuning um, just to stop it flipping over. I'm not sure if it would have flipped over. It seemed very, very stable. Um, but yes, the Chevrolet K10 is in the top 10. It has pushed the DeLorean out of the top 10. And I would highly recommend this one. If you are building a rally car, have a look into the Chevrolet K10. This is one of these seasonal cars uh, a few weeks ago, so you might struggle getting your hands on this one. But it was a very, very comfortable run, but sadly could not climb too high up the leaderboard. It sat in the middle of the leaderboard at the moment in ninth place. So, fantastic run from the K10. Let's see what we can do next week. Thank you all so much for watching this episode. If you have a suggestion of which car you'd like to see in the next episode then please do comment down below. If you did enjoy this episode, then please leave a like. And if you're new, why not subscribe for more videos just like this one. But that's going to do it for today's video. Hope you did enjoy and I'll see you next week.